welcome to the website copywriter i've just had the giggles for about 10 minutes laughing before i press record here <laughs> I'm with um, Colette Stevenson today. Um, I have uh, um, known Colette online probably since I'm guessing, I'm going to say 2019, probably. Could easily um, be that. Yeah. Uh, and I absolutely love Colette and I love your content. I love everything that you do. Um, and uh, so for, for anybody who doesn't know Colette, Colette is a um, brand designer and the inventor of content branding. So today we're going to talk about content branding, I think, and poster grade as well and anything else that might come up. <laughs> whatever, whatever comes up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If you ask me a question, I'll talk for 15 minutes and you'll have to try and stop me. So we, we might laugh for 90 minutes <laughs> time as well. I feel like that could happen. It <laughs> could happen. It could happen. You might, you might get no content from either of us just laughing. <laughs> Both like the giggliest people ever. So when we get together and, and actually you're one of the very few people who actually know that I'm a 3D person because we oh, have. Oh yeah, I've met you as a 3D person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel, um, I feel quite honoured. Yeah. I don't actually come out of my house that much. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, you know that I'm a five foot six uh, person. Yeah, and you know that I'm a five foot person. <laughs> It's always funny, isn't it, when you when you do meet um, people in real life and they're either much taller or much short, smaller than you've kind of anticipated yeah. when you only see people online. So yeah, like really I always important. think everyone's the same size as me. Right. Yeah. So usually I meet people and it turns out they're actually giants. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's definitely <laughs> um right okay so let's just be sensible okay. <laughs> professional mode. You introduce yourself for us, um, Colette, okay. and we'll go from there. All right, I'm Colette. I'm a, a brand designer, and um, basically that means I help uh, business owners and entrepreneurs develop their brands and style their brands. Um, over time, one of my personal biggest struggles was to get my content out um, in a way that was impactful, looked like me, didn't just sound like me, but looked like me, um, and didn't take a whole load of time. Because I think what a lot of business owners do, and this my, my biggest struggle, to be honest, was Instagram. I really found Instagram really hard because every single piece of content needed an image. I couldn't just put my content out into the world. I had to have something to support it. So it took time and then I couldn't get my stuff looking good. And I got sucked into this world of trying to get all the aesthetics right, probably because I'm a designer, right? Um, and I lost my way and I got frustrated with it. And then eventually I developed a system called PosterGrid where I could just slap my content together it sounds so so lame doesn't it but I didn't I didn't have to think about it right because I already knew what I wanted to say but I didn't have to think about how to present it every single time and I came up with a system where I could just put my content out there I knew how it would look I knew how it would feel and it didn't take a load of time and other people liked it so I started teaching people how to create their own seamless grids on Instagram and now I help people with feed design generally so not just the seamless grids but whatever feed style suits their individual brand so that's kind of where I, I come from but in the process when I was teaching people how to do this the biggest my biggest concern was that I was helping people who have no design background and don't really understand branding I think a lot of people have the idea that branding is a logo or maybe a couple of fonts and a couple of colors and they don't realize that branding is an essence it's a whole it's a whole being it's a whole promise and it's a whole delivery of that promise and i think a lot of people get stuck on um kind of like i did with instagram to be honest on the aesthetics of things how they think that the brand is just how it looks not how it feels not how it sounds not how it communicates um so I, in the development of the course for poster grid, I had to break everything down so that people who couldn't design could design and people who didn't understand branding could brand themselves. 
And I thought it would be really complicated, but actually I just broke down what I already did with my clients and it and called it content branding, basically. And it's a way of a way of understanding that your content isn't just what you say. It's not just your message. It's not just what you're selling. It's not just your products and your services, but it's equally important to style it in a way that reflects your message. So your message and the styling go hand in hand. And once you've got that down, everything else just falls into place. You don't have to spend hours thinking about what you don't, you don't spend hours thinking about what idea what am I going to write about today what am I going to talk about today oh my god how am I going to make it look because you already have the answers it's all right you've already done the work and you only do that work once and then revisit it and top it up every now and then was that long it was wasn't it no it's pretty like I've seen um this obviously on Instagram and it is just it's just so unique and um, just amazing the way it all works seamlessly together. It's such a brilliant um, idea. And also I've seen all of the feedback as well from people who've worked mm. with you who've said it's so easy as well because it looks like it looks pretty complicated. It does <laughs> look really complicated. It looks yeah, really hard. People are spending like hours and hours creating these feeds. But I know from, from I, I know people all. who've... Yeah. Um, who've worked with you and I know that it's like quite the opposite to that which mm. just makes from the outside even more phenomenal <laughs> I mean you can spend hours on it if you want some people do I'm, I'm sure some people do spend a little bit longer but most people I think once they've got everything in place they just slap it on I know someone who was posting six times a day at one point <laughs> it's like how <laughs> yeah. but she 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 then took the system and made it her own as well so she's got She's just got this fabulous way of just creating content and posting nonstop. And um, her business has exploded. She's won awards and all kinds just from. Well, that's what I was going to ask you next, actually. So obviously there's huge additional, there's like the, the, the benefit to the actual business owner of having this system um, is, is what we've just talked about. You know, it's quick and easy and keeps you consistent. You don't have to think. But what's the bigger impact um, for Instagram users on their so business? So it's kind of it's kind of interesting because Instagram in some ways is a bit like YouTube. It's a long game it's a long game platform so the um and I think one of the reasons well is particularly for me because I'm not a regular poster on Instagram and most of the people that come through poster grids are not the kind of people who post every single day right so they they treat it much more like a a landing page or a, a way to kind of get people into their world from Instagram to another place um and so it works quite well for people that way but I think over the course of the, because it's officially Post Grid Academy opened just a year ago. And over the course of the last year, we've pretty much had people fall into two camps. We've had some people who started getting their first 10K months within the six months of joining Post Grid Academy, uh, simply because, they, I mean, they already had a strong product and service, which helps, right? But their messaging just took them to another level um and it was it meant that they could be consistent not just on instagram but on beyond so they started getting in a lot more leads and they've been able to maintain a social media presence without a whole load of work and effort because they could just repurpose that same content everywhere so that's been really good then the other camp has been people who have seen their audience just growing steadily and then those leads just dripping in um much more gently but the leads that are coming in are long-term sustainable leads so it's it's hard to say like I'm, I'm not one of these people that will say oh you know buy this product and you're going to have like a million pound business tomorrow because that's rubbish a lot of it depends on the kind of business you've got the kind of customers you're going for and also um, I think in some cases, the experience that you've got with with business. So some people coming into Poster Grid are new to business. They're new to it entirely. They're new to social media. They're new to promoting themselves. And it takes them longer to get the ball rolling. And then you've got other people who are already in communities. They already know people. They already engage with people. Their message is already out there on multiple platforms. 
and Instagram's the top up. And for those people, they have seen much more rapid growth than people who um, have pretty much just been on Facebook for the last few years. So, Yeah, there's always going to be that um, difference between diff- where it's different stages that people yeah. are, isn't there? So do you help people with the messaging as well? Yes, to a degree, because to, to, that's all part of the brand, right? So mm-hmm. um, if I'm if I'm doing any kind of brand design, I can't. If I'm doing just that as as a as a as an independent brand designer for a client, I can't design a brand unless I understand the message. So the first thing that we do, pretty much in in post grid, is is get people to understand their own message, and, and it's surprising how many people don't well I say surprising but then I myself have struggled with it in the past sometimes it's really hard to nail your own message when you're in the middle of your own business so um that the first thing we do is work on messaging and then we revisit it and then we tear it apart and then we revisit it again um and I think messaging evolves as well with the business so we work a lot on messaging and we learn, we work a lot on brand promise as well. So the messaging and the promise are, are related, but they're not the same thing. So breaking that down is very different. I don't do copywriting, of course. That's not my thing. Maybe you could come in and have a talk with everyone. <laughs> yeah, it's like you've got the brand mm. and, the, and the messaging, which is kind of the same thing would you say and then you've got copy and visual design yeah the same level but yeah the foundation stuff but they, the, the foundation brand. stuff's the same strategy, brand yeah. strategy but the the the, fund, the 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 fundamental basis of the brand the whole value. yeah the whole brand that's the yeah, same that's I, I think the foundation is the same mm-hmm. when it comes to copy and styling I honestly believe that they should work in partnership with one another so I know you do a lot of work don't you with with website owners and uh, website developers mm-hmm. and then you work in partnership with them mm-hmm. on, on the copy side and they actually build the website and do the styling and apply the brand I guess I don't really know <laughs> but um but the, you that is a partnership thing. The the copy and the website work together with one another. They're not treated separately. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like I always say copy first, but I always say that from uh, it makes it makes the process run more smoothly for mm. your your standard web designer. Mm. So um they get my copy and then they do with that whatever they see fit. Mm. You know, like it, web designers are extremely talented at taking bits of copy and creating a design with that and yeah. you know like I, I wireframe all of my content so there are sections and I've created headlines and I've 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 mapped out exactly how the content I kind of call it content design but not designing the visual set like yes the, yeah yeah it's but it, I'm designing the way the content flows mm. but then the web designer can tweak that and do whatever they want with it mm. but that's but so the reason I say yes they do work together but the mm. reason I say content first is because you have to start somewhere in the web design process if that makes yes. sense. yes no that does make sense so for me for me even like I Although I say the content and the styling go hand in hand, yet you still have to start somewhere. And to me, that starts with the message. Yeah. You can't you can't write your content and you can't style your brand unless you know what your message is, unless you know what you're about and who you're talking to, unless you've got that stuff in place that the other stuff, it's just not going to work. Exactly. I, so I, that's exactly the same thing because... Yeah. Um, So you've got a web designer, you've got the client and you've got myself. I'm Uh the person responsible for the message. That's why it's my job. That's why that first. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Because you need to get that. You need to nail it. Without it, you can't you can't do the rest. I I can't style something unless I know the message. I was actually before I got on with you, before I was um creating a, a, a new video. And I was making some graphics behind me to sh- to start to show how you can have exactly the same content with the same image, but styled differently. It gives a completely different message. Mm. And because I think a lot of people don't 
they hear that word. They hear, like, I will say it quite a lot. And people will hear it, but they don't know. I think they can't see what I what I mean <laughs> when when talking about this idea. When this idea, like, you know, even just a color change can change the whole the whole vibe of what that message is. You can have exactly the same words and exactly the same picture, but with a different font and a different color. It just it feels different. It expresses itself differently, and then it's perceived differently. You can look more expensive, and you can look cheaper mm -hmm. based on some very simple tweaks. And unless you know what your message is, how can you make those decisions, those creative decisions? Exactly. And do you know what? I'd say probably 90% of my customers have a web designer. Mm. But you do get, from time to time, I do get the odd one who comes for website copywriting and is building their own website. And when they put my copy on their website, when they're not a designer, the mm. difference is really phenomenal. And sometimes I have to intervene. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't help myself, but, like, intervene but because a, a it designer changes. knows this stuff. The yeah. designer knows when to make the fonts bigger, when to make the mm. fonts smaller, when to change the color, and it makes such a big it makes difference. a massive difference to how how that message is communicated and perceived, and and just like in terms of flow as well, like the way people access information. Like people don't open a, a website or look at a piece of copy on social media and read from the beginning to the end. They mm. scan through it and find the bit that's relevant to them so you have to know how to put that stuff in place so that people can find the information that's going to matter to them now actually I've got no idea when it comes to web design I probably need to hire a web designer actually hmm. <laughs> I'll put that onto my to-do list <laughs> No, no, you're right, though. So, People do look at things in different. And, and I think that um, a copywriter needs to have a basic understanding of design and a designer needs to have an understanding of copywriting. Yeah, and I think that's they do. where the two come together, isn't it? Yeah, they do. They work in partnership. And I, I find it, you know, a lot. Of, I think one of the reasons why I love what you do is that I see a lot of um, a lot of designers out there and a lot of copywriters out there working in isolation mm -hmm. and then the customer then has to work really hard at jigsawing those pieces together but they don't have that's not their skill set right they don't have they don't know how those things go together so they'll pay for a brand designer to do all their branding and then they'll pay for a copywriter to write all their copy and then it's like uh, wh what now yeah. But how do I put that stuff together and, and create content that's powerful and engaging and, and at, at the end of the day converts for me? I think a lot of people don't know. The, the, the web designers that I know that are the most successful, the ones who really are like just winning it in, in the business, uh, the web designers who recognize that mm -hmm. and they bring everybody together. Mm. Um, all the all the different specialisms together to work on the project um, because you're completely right it's it, clients don't understand why and why would they why would they, like, why would they? <laughs> and why should they like you mean should, exactly. <laughs> like, like a lot of the time I don't understand what my client does <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah so you, we learn so much. From we learn so much. We oh, do I was learn having this so conversation much. on LinkedIn uh, today, um, and like, yeah, like, oh, I, I learn more from my clients than <laughs> uh, I could ever read in a book or learn. It's because we work with so many different industries and so many different specialties, and in order to be able to nail what they need, we have to understand mm -hmm. what it is they're doing at least to a degree it's it fascinating is. it's so it's like like a design I mean I, I avoid I avoid I avoid mathematicians <laughs> <laughs> oh do you know what account I've worked with loads of accountants have and, you oh, and I, I think they avoid me too <laughs> no, 
I really, really like it. Oh, no, one, I've worked with one accountant, actually, yeah. yeah. I think, I think once, you get on, <laughs> once you get into a conversation with somebody, I think mm. those preconceived ideas of, like, you know, accountancy is boring or something, like, mm. I, I just find people fascinating. Like, yeah, people, I think... I think the people are fascinating, but because I ha- I do panic when it comes to talking yeah. numbers or tax, I panic. It's a, it's a yeah. physical thing. I don't think that I would be best placed to understand a message. I, even when I ask the questions that I need to ask to mm-hmm. get the answers that I need to get to the bottom of, I don't hear them. All I hear is VAT. <laughs> <laughs> No, so, I, yeah. the only account that I've worked with is a, was in postgrad and of course in postgrad people do their own their own designs and their own messaging and their own branding with my support I'm not doing it for them whereas if someone hires me independently to build a brand that's very different yeah no I, I work with a lot of um solicitors accountants <laughs> And I see uh, they avoid me like the play. <laughs> or or I don't target them, right? So I suppose that's probably a I I, I really love right um working out what makes that business owner completely different from mm. the last one in that industry that I've worked yeah. with. Like because every single accountant that I've written copy for has been completely different. Every single mm. solicitor has been completely different. Different values, different yes. um, U- USP, different company size. You know, I've worked with mm. big organizations. I've worked with small organizations. And it's pulling out that those that you Those little, those differences, those yeah. the essence, the... Mm. And I always say as well, from this is from a copy point of view, but I always say like the fact that I have no idea about like law or, numbers or any of those things is actually an advantage when it comes to writing copy because you don't want to really be writing about that jargon you know you're trying to speak to the people who who need it (laughs) (laughs) it to have somebody write it who doesn't understand that (laughs) so tell me about um so you've got post a great yes before we hit record you did mention that that you know that the content branding side is that different to no it wasn't no no content yeah content branding so content branding is just something I was doing organically anyway Mm -hmm. in in terms of helping people with their branding so a lot of people would come so you know I I do quite did quite a lot of logo design I don't do much logo design anymore but I did quite a lot of logo designing and a lot of um um you know uh, elements designing icons and elements and things for people um but then I started helping people with their brand colors uh, mostly because it's just something I really enjoy and I found that a lot of the people that came to me would say that they had their color palette and they didn't they had a color that they liked or maybe two colors that they liked but they didn't know how to use them or they didn't really have any structure for them. So I started building a program to help people with that. And over the course of that time, obviously, when you're working with clients, you'll know this, you end up asking quite similar questions to different people because you're looking for information. And sometimes those questions are tweaked or adapted or modified depending on that client and their how they perceive that question and how they respond to that question. And over time, you kind of build up a way to get the information that you need to to build a brand. So whether that was color palettes, font choices, a logo, whatever it was, that's what I did. But then I had to translate that to my clients in Poster Grid Academy who have no understanding of that process. And I was like, how am I going to teach people who are tax accountants, (laughs) hypnotherapists, um, VAs, um, educators, who are, oh, I'm trying to think who else we've got in there, um, like a whole a whole spectrum of people. Um, how am I going to teach them about branding and that branding process in a way that's not overwhelming and that feels like they're making progress? Because the last thing I wanted to do was have a course where people start and then they're like, oh God, I'll do this later. 
right? And then they never do. I needed people to finish the course, right? Because if they don't, they don't get their postgrads. So I broke down the system and then I didn't expect the outcome. I'll be honest. I just broke down the system so that people could actually build the poster grid, not so that people could do branding and design. But at the end of the program, the biggest feedback was not that people were really happy with their post grid, but that creating content was so much easier. Mm. And the only reason that creating content was so much easier was because they understood their brand and they'd never had that before. Um, and so when I was trying to talk about it more, I was thinking, I need a way to explain this process. I need a name. You'll like as a copywriter, you'll know sometimes you need to name the thing rather than talking around it. Anyway, content branding fell out one day and I was like, that'll do. That's what I'll stick with. That's mm -hmm. so I hashtag content branding now and I talk about content branding now. And it's just that unification of message and styling, yeah. really. Um, that make a poster grid but essentially make any kind of content whether that's web content or digital content or print content whatever it is if you're any kind of content creator then your content has to be styled in some way so that it can be consumed in in a way that's accessible and enjoyable for the end user and if that's not in place then all that time you spend making your content is wasted right so yeah that makes perfect sense that's a really that was a brilliant explanation was it? i'm gonna have to watch this back now aren't i <laughs> <laughs> watch back type it all up <laughs> <laughs> um so tell me about canva club where the idea for canva club came from oh and yeah what's yeah with that yeah so club canva's a new thing so that came to when i was in canada over the summer mm. so um Obviously, the first, first run of Poster Grid Academy was all about getting people to do the branding, get their messaging and build a poster grid. And I'd structured it in such a way that the people would come in and they'd already know everything that they needed to know about Canva. <laughs> and the bits that perhaps they didn't know, I'd show them along the way. And that was all fine. But over time, more and more people kind of dripped in who had no confidence with Canva, no experience with Canva, and they were expecting Canva training and Canva tutoring. And that's not my specialty, right? So I only use Canva for this project because it's the most accessible tool available to most users, right? Because most people are not going to be using Photoshop or Illustrator to get these results. So I had to restructure all of poster grid to be done on Canva. So my goal was not to teach people this, but it created a gap in the academy where people needed to know how to do Canva, but it wasn't a Canva course. So I was like, oh, what am I gonna do? I don't wanna start doing like Canva tutorials <laughs> in, in the academy, cause that's not what it's about. And then, I don't know, it just seemed to make sense to then have a separate thing called Club Canva, where I could give people support with Canva, like once a week in a, um, a coaching session, but I could open it up to the wider public who are not part of Poster Grid Academy, because some people still need that help. Um, and then that way, if people like it and they do want Poster Grid Academy, they get to at least test me out but it's also something extra in Poster Grid Academy. So if people join Poster Grid Academy, they then get access to Club Canva. So that's all it is. It's just a coaching thing. So people can bring in their projects, whether it's um, whether they're writing an ebook. So we've got people at the moment writing an ebook, developing a coloring book, um, writing um, just social media posts, creating social media posts. Um, and think what else that's all I can think of right now but they come in and then they share their work with me and I live edit with them yeah that's so then I teach yeah. them the skills that they need for that specific project but everybody who's present also gets to learn that information my goal in my head is that over time we'll start getting the same kind of questions or the same kind of needs looping back and then I'll create specific content that I can direct people to and say ah oh, you can find this here and you can and we can build out from there 
So that's that's the goal. Right now, it's very much in person with me, personal training and support. So do they, they generally come, do people generally come with their branding already in place? And it's about using that branding. Yeah, uh, not everyone. At the moment, it's very, very little. Because it's brand new. It only opened last week, right? It's, it's a brand new little club oh, right, thing. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. So it only opened last week. Um, and some people already have their branding in place. We've got some people who are part of franchises so that they use another person's branding, but they want to personalize it. Um, and we've got some people who just have no experience of Canva, while we've got other people who use Canva every single day. But what they want is, um, well, I've started calling this content proofing. I think it's actually a real life thing uh, where people can come in and they share their content and we proof it and we check that it's balanced and accessible and that the text is legible and the space is there. And there is some natural flow in whatever that document or project is, whether it's a presentation or a social media post. Um, so far, most people seem to be using the club for things that they're publishing for like more evergreen content rather than the disposable content. Um, that's basically it's basically what it is. It's quite it's quite simple. I, I was going to pre-record a load of tutorials and then a part of me thought, well, that's silly because I've got no control over Canva. And then as Canva changes, I have to re-record everything. And that's not really helping people with where they're at right now. Um, and there's already a bazillion Canva courses, a million Canva tutorials on YouTube. I'm recording Canva tutorials on YouTube. So what can I do that actually supports people? Mm. So. So is is it what like is your mem- is it is your community on mm. Facebook? Yes, at the moment I would like. Uh, I, I don't honestly like to move away from Facebook but it's I've, easy. I've been kicked off of it. do you know I am the most squeaky clean Facebook user I've had the you same you really are account. how could you possibly get kicked I, off oh, Facebook? it's just it's an absolute shambles the whole situation right? what, what happened? <laughs> um I just I got blocked for no reason at all I don't post or very rarely post um I don't really comment I, I, like I, I wasn't using it a lot it's not like I'd done anything that I could possibly think oh yeah maybe I shouldn't have shared that like mm, I don't do I stuff have. like that <laughs> <laughs> honestly right, I just got this message flashed up um I was using it I was looking on I was just scrolling through and then all of a sudden this message flagged up and said that I had um I'd been banned and I had 30 days to prove it was me and if I didn't in 30 days it would me account would be deleted for good so um I had to follow this link so what I had to do is put in my telephone number get a message with a code and then put it in a box so I put my telephone number in Got the, got the message on my, on my mobile with the code, mm. went back to Facebook and there's nowhere to put the code. And all it said, no. and this went on for a week, all it said um, on the landing page was your telephone number is not recognised. But I, I was receiving the code of the telephone. No. So it went, I, I kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And every time I did it, I would get blocked from doing it because it just kept flagging up saying, you've put in this, your telephone number too many times. And I'm like, but I've got the code, the telephone number's right. Anyway, after about a week, I eventually managed to get into it. All this time, I'm thinking, I don't even want Facebook. This is <laughs> That's what I'm like, I don't need Facebook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I was so adamant that I didn't even want it. But the thing was, I was thinking, you know, because I'm a bit like, well, I don't really want this on, on my digital profile as yeah. like I've done something wrong because I haven't done anything mm. wrong at all. So I thought, well, I'm gonna have to sort it out and then I'll delete deactivate my account myself. That was my, my thinking. Mm. So anyway, I uploaded um my driving license because I eventually mm. got past the loop uploaded my driving license and then it's still that that this was weeks ago and it's still saying the same thing if you don't um prove you you then we'll block your account after 30 days and I think it's probably been 30 days maybe it hasn't quite been 30 days I'm not sure um but anyway I'm just I I don't care stupid Facebook but but it's annoying because I've had that account since the beginning of time like it's not like I've like done any like changed accounts or crazy things and it's also uh, I've also lost my Instagram as well (laughs) no really 
Mm-hmm. And then oh and I, used to, I used to get um, inquiries through um, Instagram quite, yeah. quite regularly. I mean, I never really used facebook much anyway i'm not I'm no but in, instagram is quite good for inquiries and the, the good thing about instagram if you get like if i get an in, if i get an inquiry from facebook there's a greater chance that's the end of the inquiry right? i get the inquiry and a reply and then it's like oh and then like nobody will go oh, i've got to pay money no thank you <laughs> they disappear again Whereas on instagram <laughs> it's so funny because it's so true <laughs> Well, you don't do it for free. <laughs> it's a good job we've got solid boundaries. <laughs> I never used to. No, but no. <laughs> like, like three years ago, it would have been, oh, okay then. Okay, but <laughs> well, you've got no money. Okay, neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just be pretty again. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, at least with Instagram, if you get a lead on Instagram, generally it's a converting lead. It's it's somebody who's who knows that they're gonna be investing in themselves in some way. So quite like Instagram for that. I, I find I, my Instagram. leads. I love my leads on Instagram. I love them. I, I found Instagram extremely profitable over the years. I stopped putting as much emphasis on it only because I was overwhelmed trying to focus massively on LinkedIn and massively on yeah. Instagram. So over the last year, I'd kind of stopped. Well, I had stopped posting anyway. So losing the account wasn't much of a loss. But it was the only reason was because I had to make a decision because I couldn't spread myself between two places and be yeah. the best person I could be in two places. And I yeah. just chose LinkedIn because I'm not, as much of a visual business, I guess. Mm. Um, but it could have easily, I could have easily swung the other way. Yeah, see that that was my that was my struggle. I was tr- spreading myself too thin on LinkedIn and Instagram back in the day. But mm-hmm. I was I am a visual business, mm-hmm. so I needed like Instagram was like my portfolio, and I was mm-hmm. like ha- I need to be able to present myself there. And I found it exhausting. And then yeah, anyway, PostGrid saved me now because I I. Like I haven't posted, I don't post regularly. I'm not a regular poster on Instagram, but my my bio works beautifully. Like I get links and clicks regularly from my bio, even when I'm not posting regularly. I don't get loads of engagement. I don't get loads of likes, but I get nice, healthy leads. So I think yeah. Instagram's good. But I can't, that's awful that you've lost it. Well, I keep thinking about setting up like a, you know, a, what's it called? A backup account. Just, well, t- to be honest, I'm I'm going to say it. Shh, don't tell anyone, even though this is like recorded on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I have top secrets. Big secret that I'm going to tell <laughs> the entire the world. <laughs> YouTube, <laughs> but um, I have got a, a backup account that I uh, just to get into one or two groups that I I needed to be in. Mm. Um, but I'm not. I, I've only um accepted my husband as a friend, and I'm not accepting any. Yeah, no. <laughs> so because because I just don't want to. I don't want to. I just don't really. I'm not a Facebook fan mm. anymore. That's, no the top and bottom of it it's not a place no. for me anymore see I I yeah I mean so I saw a, something earlier it was on TikTok so now you see I really am spread thin now I'm on TikTok YouTube LinkedIn Facebook Instagram <laughs> like talk about burned out but to be honest this this is another reason why poster grid really helps me so I've got poster grid set up for TikTok as well so I've got like an animated poster grid on there and then um I love that, by the way. I've seen that, and it is like yeah. nobody's doing anything. Nobody's like that. doing that. I know. Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> but really I, I really, I, I love that, and it just means. And again, it's that whole. I don't have to post all the time, but what it does is it, it gives me that kind of, it gives me an identity and a brand and a different audience and a way to stand out. So I, you know, I like that. So YouTube's just once a week, Instagram's a few times a week, sometimes none. <laughs> TikToks a few times a week and then LinkedIn and Facebook I try and post daily in some way or other but um I can't remember what I was talking about now spreading my- oh the spreading myself too thin thing and oh, that's basically why I ended up doing poster grid because I just yeah well, just well, I, 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 honestly, I honestly think I was we were talking about this as well before I press record but I honestly think that the the key to a successful business is appearing to be more visible vis- Vis- visible 
than you really are. And, <laughs> yes. like, and, 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 like, I am way more visible. Like people comment all the time, oh, you're always on LinkedIn. I'm always, you, you sit. but I have like spent a long time, years creating hacks for myself. Mm. So that I am more visible on LinkedIn than yeah. I I'm really visible on LinkedIn, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. It does make sense. I've got like so many hacks now, so that it look. It, hopefully, it looks like I'm everywhere. Mm-hmm. Even though you know, I, I will quite. Ha- I can now pretty much go a whole day and and not be around. But yeah. the other, my biggest hack is to avoid consuming content. Yeah. Um, and to remember that, and also to remember that anytime I, I comment or engage with content, that is me creating content as well. Absolutely. Yes. So Absolutely. Um, I, I work, I, I, I'm really quite strict with myself on that. I, I tend to not, I, I do get lost a bit with TikTok. Um, so, <laughs> I don't, I've separated TikTok from my business head completely. Mm. So um, I, I have an account and I love TikTok for mindless scrolling and looking yeah. at stuff non-business related. But that's like my uh, zone out space where I don't have to. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't. I just enjoy TikTok. Yeah, that, that I, I enjoy TikTok. Yeah, I, I just enjoy TikTok. But b- because it's set up like a grid, um, it, it, it's again, it's one of those places. It's real estate for me. Mm, definitely. Um, so I'm like, you know, I want to be able to, it's just a way to showcase the whole thing. But uh, okay. yeah, and you can repurpose a lot of that short form video on YouTube, which is my next thing to do. Mm. The whole repurposing thing. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. Oh, like repurpose as much as you possibly yeah. can. So it's all, it's all in the... um in the the hacks to save time it is isn't it hacks to save time that we can have like a little afternoon nap (laughs) 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 oh I knew what I was going to say somebody I saw someone on TikTok this morning saying you know have you ever had a break from social media and I I was like yeah I took three weeks off but nobody noticed (laughs) nobody noticed I just didn't go on but I had stuff going out I mean probably I was less around but yeah I think yeah. like in, um, in engaging up other people's content is really important but if you can mm. do it in a strategic way that's mm. you know beneficial for everybody the, yes the people who you want to network with and and yourself. also if it's just genuinely supportive mm-hmm. right I just I just think you know if you can be genuinely supportive of people like if I'm in a funk I avoid social media because my, that tone is going to come out, right? Mm. That tone is going to come out. But if I can, I don't know, if, I, if I'm like, now I'm feeling a bit light. If after this conversation, I went on social media and had a little scroll and I saw some post that I resonated with in some way, then I'll, I'll engage. That's mm. It's content that's creating content. But I, I very rarely, if ever, go on Facebook, LinkedIn or Instagram just to consume content mm. uh, yeah I, I do on uh tiktok but i do on tiktok i yeah, just tic- enjoy, like right, just, just <laughs> tiktok's enjoy. fun <laughs> it's like dopamine hits dopamine hits, it dopamine really hits, is dopamine. it's like constant dopamine i just absolutely love it <laughs> it is it's really really yeah. good they, they they've mastered the algorithm to give you the content that you actually want right Oh, do you know what? And you can um, change the algorithm really quickly. You know, yes. if you want to like consume a certain thing and you just flick, 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 find that, watch it. And then you'll get something else. Find that, watch it. And then you're in and you've. Then that's it. That. Yeah, that's it. Then you, it's all on your For You page and you're like, oh. Find your own algorithm kind of thing. And it's the same if you if, I, if I'm not in the mood for a certain type of content. I mm. just I purposely flick it really fast. Yeah. And then I know it'll. Good. And it, it's really, really responsive. Oh, it's a really responsive yeah. algorithm. I, I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I've ever ever known. But yeah. I think it's important for people to realise that they they are actually more in charge than and than they might realise they are. Yeah. Hey, yeah. We've covered a lot. Haven't we, we have, haven't we? We really have. It's been really fun. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I could I could just sit and chat and chat and chat and chat and chat and chat all day. It's yeah. been really, 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 really fun. But um, I think I'm going to ask you if there's anything else that you wanted to share about what you're doing or um, Gosh, what's going on. And then I think we'll say bye bye. I feel like I've just like talked everyone's ears off. <laughs> I do this thing like I think I don't know if it's nerves or excitement or or I don't know whatever it is but at the beginning of anything like this I go <laughs> spill everything and then at the end there's like the wrap-up question I'm like oh god I've got nothing to say <laughs> yeah. I think it's just excitement I like yeah. I think we're, we've got a very similar energy of like mm. getting really excited over the <laughs> Like, oh sometimes God. I get too excited like that's one of my problems like it's because I think anxiety and over excitement are very they similar. go hand in hand uh-huh. they really do I, uh-huh. I've constantly been told my whole life I've been told to calm down in some way or other like I'm, I'm excitable yeah I'm, I'm excitable like do you do like crazy like things in the living room on an evening, like dancing? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, that, totally I'm that man who comes in going to the conversation. <laughs> 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 Just look and go. <laughs> so my my son, my son he's only eight right so he ju- he'll he'll ju- he'll just say mummy why are you so weird but he's still entertained by it right we're, we're, we'll get to that point no, no, my daughter's 12 so <laughs> yeah yeah exactly I've only got like got a very small window where he's going to be enjoying it and not be like <laughs> <laughs> who is this crazy person I have for a mother <laughs> I, I do it down the street so I don't even notice like mom why did you do that in the street <laughs> <laughs> It's like this permanent state of entertaining ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to stop recording. All right. One. Okay. Just okay. Like a, a comment, the comedy duo. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> right. I'm gonna um, press record and hope that I don't lose you because that's All right. a habit of doing that. Okay. Oh, I've done that too. Press the wrong button. Uh,